Hi, everybody. My name is Carla, and I am a child of pop culture. <laughs> My soul was fed in the 70s and 80s on an equal diet of television, movies, and top 40 music, and I have unintentionally spent a lifetime absorbing and studying them. And it looks like I came by it honestly. Yes, that is me and the character Washington from Welcome Back, Cotter. And in case you're wondering, I'm the bald one. Uh, it has been said before that humans are meaning-making machines and that really there are no new ideas. But if that's the case, I would argue that we are meaning, or making meaning through the juxtaposition of ideas and it's the formation of new patterns and connections between them that creates something richer than a single idea on its own. Looking back, I realize I've always been fascinated by these connections. The first case I can remember came in 1980 when Marty Feldman was a guest star on The Muppet Show. They reenacted the story of Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, and as the Muppets were standing all in front in, of the rock yelling, Open Sesame! My four-year-old mind was blown when all of the Sesame Street characters spilled forth. It was so exciting that I'm still talking about it three decades later. I also grew up listening to the American Graffiti soundtrack and was obsessed with the television show Happy Days. So I felt the same excitement when I came to understand that the show Happy Days was a loose carryover from the American Graffiti film. And then again, I was excited when Happy Days itself spun off shows like Laverne and Shirley, as well as Mork and Mindy. And I thought any time the characters crossed over into any of the other shows, it was a special event and you felt like you were being let in on a secret. There they all are. <laughs> As I got older, music videos became my obsession, and it was exciting watching this new fo art form take place. Basically, the rules of filmmaking had been thrown out the window for the sake of videos that were experimental and raw and poetic all at once. And I don't know how many of you remember logos such as this, but there was a time when music videos played all the time on channels that only showed music videos as well as programs that were dedicated to, to uh, sharing them. Uh, the music group REM raised the bar when they had Tarzan Singh direct their Losing My Religion video. He incorporated imagery by the Renaissance painter Caravaggio and the Russian filmmaker Tarkovsky, which brought even more beauty and symbolism to the meaning of the song. I also became a fan of certain music groups, which I now realize may have been more due to the work of the filmmaker and photographer Anton Corbine, who also used iconic imagery and archetypal characters and videos that he directed for Depeche Mode, U2, and Nirvana. One of the more relevant throwbacks at that time came when the director Spike Jones put the band Weezer into an episode of a Happy Days or uh, an episode of Happy Days for their Buddy Holly music video. When Arnold, with Arnold Steiner as a backdrop and cameos from all of the Happy Days main characters, including Fonzie doing traditional Ukrainian dance, it was a happy day indeed. And then imagine my delight when Coldplay asked Anton Corbijn to redirect uh, the Enjoy the Silence video that he shot for Depeche Mode 20 years earlier. It became a secondary music video for their Viva La Vida song, and it was brilliant. The movie Pulp Fiction came out during my first few years at film school, and it was a shining example of postmodernism, which was the umbrella category that any and all stories using juxtaposition and genre mashups were being, um, and continue to be, lumped under. But I somehow felt there was more to it than that. It was while taking a Canadian literature course that I discovered similar patterns and connections were being studied within Canadian literature specifically, and how the use of parody, though not in a comedic sense, was a way to bring two disparate ideas together to create new meaning. While studying the novel The English Patient, we peeled back the layers, uncovering numerous cultural and literary references, which created an incredibly rich and evocative story. For instance, each of the four main characters has a literary and or historical reference from ancient Greece, the Renaissance, and, early 20th, and the early 20th century. Uh, one specific example is the character Kip, who is loosely based on Rudyard Kipling's Kim. Another connection that impressed upon me came from what I consider one of the best television programs of all time, ER. 
It was played out when one of the central characters, Dr. Mark Green, played by Anthony Edwards, dies. The writers of the show decided to reenact verbatim and shot by shot a pivotal scene from the very first episode of the series where Dr. Mark Green delivers advice to intern John Carter. But this time around, it's Dr. John Carter, played by Noah Wiley, who dispenses the exact same advice to the new intern, Michael Gallant. It was a brilliant plot move and a perfect full circle tribute to the characters as well as its devoted audience, making a truly touching moment all that more poignant. Now, is it a coincidence that one of, my, one of the former stars of ER, George Clooney, is also a star of one of my favorite films all of all time, Out of Sight? I don't know. Uh, but if you haven't seen this movie, you really should. In an effort to create connections within my own work, in my upcoming short film, I've decided to name the two main characters, Gary and Celeste, after the aliases that Jennifer Lopez and George Clooney's characters use during their secret rendezvous in Out of Sight. In my film, though, the characters' names will never be spoken aloud, but just knowing their origins makes me smile. So after a life's work of slowly sharpening my senses, I found that it's these patterns or connections that keep me engaged and in love with good storytelling. It's the same reason people used to search for DVD Easter eggs. It's why we sit through the Marvel movie credits in their entirety. It's what makes us feel like we're in on the joke, it's the riddle to solve, and it's the thing that causes the hairs on the back of your neck to stand up. And it's the magic you find when you holler open sesame and roll back the rock and unexpected and wonderful things spill forth. Thanks very much.